sick outs swelling in the NYPD tonight. The staggering number of officers off the job as they fight an invisible enemy. Plus threatening fines and even jail time. We'll talk about a crackdown across one state on anyone who defies the order to social distance and stay home. Good evening at 11. I'm Stephen Holt. And I'm Natalie Pascarella. Right now, most of the 32 million people living in the tri state are being urged to stay at home. This includes the entire state of Connecticut, where an order took effect just about three hours ago. Here in the city, 125 people have now died from the coronavirus. And we've learned tonight a Brooklyn High School principal is one of them. Total cases across the five boroughs this evening top 13,000. News Force Raviera on the west side of Manhattan kicking off our team coverage outside of the Javits Center, one of several facilities in the city, Ray, that's going to be transformed into a makeshift hospital. That's right, Stephen and Natalie. And as we go on the air tonight, some new numbers that are very surprising. Roughly 6.6% of the NYPD is out sick. There are 100 confirmed cases of COVID-19 on the force. That surge of cases being seen throughout the city. And for that reason, the governor is opening up the Jacob Javits Center as a makeshift hospital. The National Guard is in New York City. The beds are here, and the Javits Center will become a hospital. All systems are go here, as you can see behind me. This is the next step in the fight against the coronavirus. New York City is now the epicenter. In order to help quickly filling hospitals, the governor opening the largest convention center in the city for health care. Why is the building not entirely full? While Mayor Bill de Blasio toured Kohler Rehab Center on Roosevelt Island, it, too, will house hundreds of beds for COVID-19 patients. We will have additional capacity to handle this surge in coronavirus cases. That surge in cases also being seen within the NYPD. A hundred sworn members tested positive for coronavirus. Right now, just over 2,400 officers are out sick. We are still in the relative calm before the storm. Now the mayor cautioning folks about parks doubling down on the need for social distance. New York City, now the battleground in the fight against COVID-19. That if we see people in groups, we're going to break them up. If we see a place that's too crowded, we're going to get people to disperse. When I hear about the police that are going to be in the parks, that's not okay. Tonight, the mayor and governor say there is a strong need for equipment, for overalls, for masks, for ventilators. They say some companies have stepped up to make some of these things, but it's not enough, and they need it ASAP. We're live on the west side tonight. I'm Ray Vieta, News 4 New York. Ray, thank you very much. Now to New Jersey, where the time for warning is over. The words of the state attorney general, who's now cracking down on anyone who violates Governor Murphy's order to stay at home. Violators could now face criminal charges, punishable by up to six months behind bars, and $1,000 in fines. That warning coming as the state approaches nearly 3,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus. News for Shecky back for tonight. Continue our team coverage live from Hoboken. And Shecky, you've also got some breaking news on public transit. Yes, yeah, Stephanie, New York Waterway announcing it is suspending service in Hoboken, Weehawken, and Edgewater indefinitely because of severely low ridership as most people are now staying home. We know that other transit uh, agencies have asked for a bailout. It's unclear if New York Waterway will be one of them. But today, Governor Mur Murphy making it very clear that the tri state will need federal money and lots of it to recover. As the number of coronavirus cases continues to grow, so does the need for more money. Uh, Governor Cuomo, Governor Wolf, Governor Lamont, and I believe our region alone is in need of something like $100 billion. The governor submitting a federal major disaster declaration request. He's also putting out a warning to those choosing to not keep their distance. We're going to have to, we're going to have to enforce the social distancing stuff that we're talking about. Shannon Hyman yeah, agrees. It was scary. I'm more so um, concerned about my grandmother. Her 10 year old daughter, probably the only kid who wasn't giddy about the governor's announcement, schools will likely remain closed for an extended period of time. I miss being with my friends, being around my teachers. Meanwhile, people hoping to be tested face continued long lines. In Bergen County, the hardest hit. Four days of early closures and people being turned away. Monmouth County's first day open Monday, cars waiting to enter PNC Bank Art Center were backed up to the Garden State Parkway. But new testing sites in Newark and Union County avoided the lines by requiring a prescription and an appointment. We wanted to limit um, 
the worried well of our population from overwhelming this site. Now, Hudson Region Valley Hospital will start offering COVID-19 testing tomorrow. It is also by appointment only and also only for Hudson County residents and first responders. We're live in Hoboken tonight. Checky Beckford, News 4 New York. All right, thank you, Checky. The coronavirus death toll sadly in Connecticut has risen to 10, and the new numbers released today show that 415 people have now tested positive for the virus. Governor Ned Lamont also said this afternoon that he's ordering all schools to remain closed until at least April 20th. That extends the original date of March 31st.